There's a big showdown on the baseball diamond in Greenville this weekend between the ECU Pirates and the 18th ranked Rice Owls, and it got started tonight. And if you were looking for stellar starting pitching, well, Clark LeClaire Stadium was the place for you. The Pirates Conference USA home opener and still looking for their first conference win, but they had to face Rice ace Austin Kubica, and he gets Cannon to ground into the five, four, three, double play. ECU countered with Jeff Hoffman, who was dealing and fielding his position. Youngsters, if you can land in a good fielding position, then you have a balanced delivery. Keep that in mind. Pirates had a hard time figuring out Kubica, and when they did get wood on it, it was right at an owl. The only Pirate that was crossing the plate early on was Eli when he was racing Petey, and he won. 5-4-3 for the Pirates to end a Rice threat. And then Coach Billy Godwin trying to get something going on offense. Jay Cannon pulls back the bunt, drives it to left, but the left fielder wise to the ploy and almost doubles up the EC runner back at first. Then Zach Houchins drives it to deep right center and the Owl center fielder comes out of the left side of your screen, makes a great sliding catch at the warning track, and he too almost gets a Pirate runner back at first, but they were back in time. Let's go back and take one more look at the play. Did the ball come out of the glove on the track? It looks like it reaches back under his body to show the umpire he's got it. Hard to tell. We're looking at it at five times slower than real time. Nevertheless, we go to the ninth, still scoreless. Hoffman still out there, but the Owls started to rally. They slap it to left, and then their legendary coach trying to manufacture some offense. Another slap to left. Then, with a runner on third, the, the Pirates get the chopper, but they can't get the force, and the ball gets away. Another Rice run scores. They would go on to win it three to nothing. After the game, Hoffman talked about the ninth, and Coach Godwin continued to support his team. I didn't feel tired, but I did. I left a couple pitches, not not up, but they were more up in the zone than I was all game. Overall, I mean, we haven't got the results we all wanted, but uh, these guys are on the same page about competing, and uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing I could do right now. And in my role, in my leadership role, is just to go in and you know keep them fired up and keep encouraging. This series resumes tomorrow afternoon at two at Clark LeClaire. It's been a tough month for the Wolfpack. First, Lorenzo Brown declared for the NBA draft. Then, C.J. Leslie followed him. And now, Plymouth native and standout freshman Robbie Rodney Purvis has been given permission to transfer to the University of Connecticut. Purvis averaged more than eight points a game and more than two rebounds a game this past year for the Wolfpack. Today, reports surfaced that a new Earnhardt will get behind the wheel of a race car on one of the biggest racing circuits very soon. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will put his nephew, Jeffrey Earnhardt, in the driver's seat for the number five Chevy for the April 26th nationwide race at Richmond International Raceway. With the move, the Earnhardt family becomes only the second family to have four generations drive on a top circuit. The Petty family is the other with Adam becoming the fourth in that line. Jeffrey is the son of Kerry Earnhardt, the lesser known of Dale Earnhardt's sons. But nevertheless, Jeffrey sure to have a wide fan base before he ever makes his first lap as Uncle Dale is NASCAR's most popular driver year after year. That's all for sports. More with Brian, Jamie, and Skip after the break. You're watching Fox Eastern Carolina News.